Welcome to Physics Office Hours. My name is Eric. Here we go, spin part two. Helicity versus chirality. Those two terms constantly tripped me up when I began learning particle physics, so I'm here to set the record straight. Let's get this done, let's take care of it. When we see part three, we're gonna be talking about spinners. What the spinners actually look like and how we use them in the wave function. If you like physics and you like what you see here, again, I stream on twitch.tv slash physics OH. You can catch me there every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. EDT. That might be changing soon, so you might want to hop in the Discord or follow me on the socials below so you can get those notifications and figure out when I go live. I'm always open to viewer questions, so if anything in this video trips you up or you have a question about physics in general, stop in and ask your questions there. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. Let's go. Um, all right. There are a lot of conversations happening, but that's okay. Uh, I mean, let's just let's just be clear about a couple things and just say that a, a spin spin it is a vector. It has a direction. It has a, a moment. It has a direction and a magnitude. I think maybe what we could talk about with the direction is something that we're going to talk about right now, which is helicity versus chirality, because we're going to hear about those words chirality. I did figure out chirality for fundamental particle physics is not the same as chirality in in chemistry. Chirality in chemistry, I don't exactly know what it is. I just know that they're different. <laughs> um, which is a little bit weird. I think they both have to do with like handedness, like if something's left-handed or right-handed. But it's um, it's a different. But I just, I know what it is for particles, and we'll leave it at that. Um, so helicity, helicity is a little easier. Helicity is what you would put on something like a, a massless boson, okay? A massless boson is, you can write it basically as the spin. Here, I'll do some definitions. Helicity. Helicity. Helicity is spin, whew, spin projected, so inner product. <laughs> uh, uh, onto the momentum. So how something is traveling in space and how it's spinning in space, momentum. How something is traveling in space, how it's spinning in that space, you can project those two vectors together and you get something that's called helicity. If something and it's it's one thing or the other right so if you have it's really like a polarization it's, it's the way that my advisor always says to think about it because you either have something that's spinning this way and traveling this way or it's spinning this way and traveling this way with respect to itself so here we have the two helicities so you say it's either spinning this way and traveling this way or it's spinning this way and traveling this way there's not like anything else really with this. Now, I think you could have spin zero particles, but I don't exactly, with uh, spin zero massless bosons, which would be a Higgs, but I know nothing about how that looks. Um, <laughs> and see, yeah, I, it's, it's mostly my fault for trying to, for trying to ask questions and see what the answer is. Um, but no, it's all good. I do like the people have the. I do like the people use the the chats for conversation. It's just it's, we have to be careful. I have, I have to be careful about reading it. I suppose. Um, the uh, but yeah. So we could talk about helicity. But what happens if it's massless? Okay. So, horn torus topology hurts my. <laughs> what? You could say that chirality is chiral since you have two different versions between chemistry and physics. <laughs> you have physics handed and you have chemistry handed. I like that a lot. Uh, Horror and tor uh, Taurus topology hurts my head. I have to look at that. I don't know what that is. I want to see it though. Whoa! That's that spinner thing we were talking about. That thing's crazy. Check this out. Wow. 
So I have no idea really how to talk about the Higgs, the uh, spin of a Higgs particle. So we're gonna just we're gonna stay away from that for now, I think. Um, but yeah. So what happens if our particle is massive? Okay. Now if you have a particle that's relativistic and near massless, like one might say that neutrinos fall into this category. Neutrinos, you can basically treat them with helicity. Also with neutrinos, we only have left-handed neutrinos, which is a weird thing, but that's the only thing that we have in our, in our theories, our left-handed neutrinos. It's a very unusual circumstance. Um, but what happens if you have a massless particle like an electron? Can we talk about helicity like that? So what if you say you have a, a particle, an electron, that's traveling this way and it's spinning this way, okay? But it's massless, or it's massive. So well, the difference between massless and massive is if it's massive, it does not need to travel at the speed of light. So what if you're traveling faster than the electron? I might need to look at the definition of this in a second. A massless particle like an electron. Sorry, what? <laughs> a massive particle like an electron. Did I misspeak? I probably have misspoken like five times during this whole thing. But if you have a massive particle like an electron, it's traveling less than the speed of light, and you're traveling faster, then what's going to happen? Well, you're going to get the particle spinning this way, and you're going to watch it go off. So it's going to go off this way, and it's going to be spinning this way. And you're going to be like, look at that particle go. It's going really fast, so I could say it's some, some, approximately some sort of helicity, you know, uh, this way. And then I'm going to say, okay, now I'm going to get in the spaceship and accelerate to faster than the electron. And then I'm going to just cruise and wait for the electron to, p to pass me. And what's going to happen? Well, or actually I'm going to cruise at a constant velocity as I press, pa as I press the electron. I press it. And as you're going past the electron at a constant velocity, the electron, you're going to feel stationary in your spaceship. Oh, I should look at the camera. So you're going to be driving at a constant velocity in the middle of the space. There's going to be nothing, no reference frames around you for traveling bodies. And you're going to see the particle go by like this. And what's different about it? Well, from your reference frame, your inertial reference frame, the particle is traveling to the left. But when you first set it out, it's traveling to the right. So does the spin change no the spin doesn't change you set the spin this way so what did we do in order to correct for the fact that the um you missed a massive moment bit you're on fire <laughs> so when you see the particle spinning in the opposite direction that it's moving we need to call that chirality now we need to induce another thing called chirality so uh, chirality is for massive particles. Uh, one can imagine having a reference frame change the direction of the momentum, but not the spin. So that's when we need to induce something called chirality. So let's deep, dig a little deeper into chirality before we hit the book, before we hit the board on spinners. Because so then we're actually going to look at spinners, and then we're going to try to make sense of some twister theory spinners. But I didn't get there. <laughs> So I don't know if we're gonna get there. You guys are gonna be proud of me, ready? Uh, look at all these tabs. Let's do this one, there we go. Look at all these tabs. <clears throat> so, Chirality and helicity. So chirality is a phenomenon that's not, is not, that, is, that is not identical to its mirror image, okay? Uh, it's one that is not identical to its mirror image, blah, 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 handedness. We talked about chirality a little bit when we talked about antiparticles. Like when we talked about the muon versus the anti-muon and the neutrino versus the anti-muon neutrino. How can you function with so few tabs? <laughs> oh man, I hate having this many tabs open. But you can see what I was talking about before, right? Now we can sort of talk about what right positive, right negative, you know, left positive, left negative. We can really get into the differences between what things are going. So before we used to say this is this is left helicity and this is right helicity. Well, now we have to go left helicity, but things are changing, but it's spinning positive or negative, and we go left helic right helicity, and things are positive or negative. I know I don't. I this is a lot of tabs for me. 
Uh, so it says, like, for massless particles, or even some fermionic particles that are close to mass massless, like uh, neutrinos, uh, or relativistic, we can say, the relativistic particles, then we can say that, you know, that helicity is enough. Helicity is enough to do what we need to do. That may not be the case with neutrinos. We may need to work on the chirality of it. But right now, we're not finding any right-handed neutrinos. Uh, it's an interesting thing that we have to deal with. Uh...